Hey, Paul. Hey, Fab. How's it going? Good. You? Good, good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, actually, I was complaining right before. <laughs> right. No, I can't complain. No, you can't complain. Um, All the complaining's out. <laughs> um, for the record, I wasn't complaining about the show or anything. No, he was compl- ah. Fab was talking about... Uh, we were talking about suburban life as opposed to city life. And yes. Um, and let's leave it at that. <laughs> so today, not at all the same topic. Uh, you suggested talking about sales remuneration, um, which is a topic, honestly, I don't know much about because it's a bit further away from what I've seen. Uh, but I do have some points of view from looking at the situation from afar. Let's put it that way. Um, but but you want to kind of set the table? Like what's, I mean, obviously I think sales remuneration is pretty straight self-explanatory, but let's, you know, set the table yeah. a bit. Like what do you, what, what do you mean by sales remuneration? Well, sales remuneration, obviously <laughs> it's, it's about how much base salary you give, how much commission you, you pay. And let's face it in the last year, year and a half, it's also about the effects of inflation on remuneration. Um, and maybe, um, you know, the preconceived notions uh, uh, an owner or a manager might have on the value of what that remuneration should be. Um, and quickly, we touched it just before we talked, but also how do you how do you track it, particularly on commission and bonuses? You know, what, do, what are you going to base? What are you going to base that remuneration on? And that I think falls in your world of RevOps to say, well, what are we what are the key performance indicators that we're going to follow to 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 uh, remunerate people, particularly mm-hmm. commission. So, you know, th- I think those are are the different aspects. The first aspect I'd like to touch upon, and I don't think I think your your expertise is as good as mine, and you'll you've probably seen it in your in your reality, is people maybe being a little bit out of touch with market values in the last couple of years because things have changed so much, right? When there's a huge demand, well, you know, basic economics, when there's a huge demand on a certain position and the supply is limited well you know it affects the price so um what i've noticed is i've had a few conversations with some of my clients who say well uh, i'll say i'll say to them well, what do you expect to to uh, to pay a representative or a manager or whatever position you're looking to hire in this market and they'll give a number and i'll say well you're not being realistic because this, you know, in the last couple of years, it's gone up and they'll say, well, that position is not worth that. And you got to be careful there because you deciding it's not worth it is not a reflection of the reality of the market. Um, so I think that's something that's very important to make sure that you're cognizant of and that you're aware of in this market to say, well, what what is the real value? And you got to be careful because even some websites might be behind because things may have changed a lot in the last six months. And it, in, 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 in economic conditions, when there's a lot of inflation, things can change quite rapidly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, to me, that's interesting that you say the market reality, because, you know, obviously I have a background in marketing and, and that was kind of the challenge as well. Um, you know, so I'm a little surprised that, I, that you're saying that about sales. And I'm not saying it's wrong or I disagree. I'm just surprised because, you know, my vision of sales is always a little easier to tie sales back to um, business results, right? Like when you're hiring a graphic designer, it's a little hard sometimes to to determine exactly what what the value that they're, the impact that they're having on the business. You know, you need them because there's some things that you can't deliver, but uh, whereas a salesperson, you're like, well, you know, at the end of the year, did they, did they, did they, move the bottom line or not yeah Yeah. but but i I can see that right like i mean and that's always the case with businesses they always want to underpay employees so they can maximize their profit like that's just the reality of of a business um but yeah the market reality is is that and i think uh, the market the market is what the market is right and you have to be able to pay a fair amount because i think if you do try to cheap out too much You'll you'll end up with probably somebody who's not a right fit for your organization. Uh, if you're going purely on a low salary, um, I don't know. I, I I haven't seen that work too well in the past. Like just trying to hire somebody based off of the a lower a lower salary point. Um, but 
uh, that's one thing. I think I think though on if if I put on my operational hat there, I think that's where your CRM needs to be on point, right? Because it shouldn't be that complicated to, especially sales, like we said, you know, where where the the tie back to revenue is is maybe a bit more one to one, but maybe not one to one. I know there's a lot of factors. There's obviously a lot of factors implement influencing a sale, but um, you know. To me, it's a symptom. Not being aware of the market reality is a symptom that you're, you as a sales leader, as a company, are not fully aware of your own internal numbers, right? Because if you know that a rep can bring in, I don't know, six million dollars of revenue a year, you know, then paying somebody a hundred thousand dollars to do that is maybe not. I mean, obviously there's profits to take take into account, but it's probably not that outrageous, right? Where so. To me, like that would be my, my operational hat there would be if if you're wanting to not pay what the market dictates is, is probably an indication that there's some data issues. Yeah, you know what? That's a very good point. And yeah. you're right. And the first thing you need to say is, OK, in my mind, let, let's just throw some numbers out there to, to give a clear example. In my mind, a salesperson should be making, you know, 70,000 base plus $30,000 commission if they hit targets. And then you realize, oh, wow, I'm totally out of whack. And the market's really saying it's 150 uh, and being able to bring up the 175. Well, then you need to look back at your numbers, say, well, I might not be able to afford to pay that because if, you know, my costs have gone up, things have gone up. So what are the alternatives? Uh, yeah. Does the owner have to sell? So. If your data is telling you you can't afford what you need, well, then you need to restructure the what your, your idea as a whole. But you can't just say, well, I'm going to go find, like you just said, I'm going to go find a cheap salesperson. Well, if you go find a cheap salesperson, you'll get what you pay for, right? Yeah. Um, so, so you might, maybe they don't have the experience. Uh, maybe they don't have the knowledge, um, whatever it might be. So then you're in trouble. So you're, you're right in the operationalizing operationalization part of it. The first thing you need to figure out is does the data match? Does it make sense? Can I afford to to pay what is necessary in the market? And it yeah. can't just be I want to cheap out. I mean, you said that you know you say that most people you know want to save money or they want to make money. Yes, but I think most business owners will be happy to pay someone really well if they feel that that business will come in and help the business move forward. So, so that's that's the first issue. So the first yeah. issue is. You have to be realistic in what you can get for the price you're willing to pay. And you have to be realistic in what do I need to pay for what I need to get. And you have to be realistic is does this make sense for my company? If this yeah. is, you know, if, if you're trying to increase your, your team size, um, it's one thing, you know, I want to go from five to six reps or from 10 to 15 reps, whatever it might be. Does it make sense? But often the biggest bump or the biggest difficulty is to go from zero to one, right? Yeah. The owner... The owner was running the business and suddenly he wants to hire someone and that becomes a lot more difficult. And I, I, I've seen that with a lot of a lot of clients and it's not an easy task. The it's second not an easy transition for sure. No, it's not. It's not an easy transition. You need to really analyze it. You need to analyze what you said data wise. What do my numbers say? What can I afford? And market wise, what can I get for that amount? And does it really make sense? You know, you make it mm -hmm. very cold and then say, well, my data says I can only afford 100, but the market says I need to pay 150. Well, you need to recalibrate. Or maybe your, your data says, oh, I can pay 150, and for 150, you can get something good. All right, that makes sense. But you need to be, uh, ra you need to be rational and look at your data first. I, I totally agree. The yeah. second thing I want to address is, and I, I want your opinion on this because I know you have one, and I know you've had clients that have done this, is commission, no commission, and how much commission? Um, and I'll, 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 sh I'll shoot my opinion of that and then you can come in. My opinion of that is if, um, if you're looking at a model, let's say you're looking at a model in an industry, um, that in, in a company where you're trying to have a lot of growth, I, I, I like the model of commission for individual result because it's based on your personal effort. And in sales, it'll drive the behavior of wanting to sell more. Um, so I like that model. I'm not so keen on the 100% base salary model. Um, 
I find that can sometimes generate complacency. Now I want to hear you because I know you have a different perspective on this. I have a very different perspective on this. Um, I think for me, you know, I, I didn't realize these are maybe the, what a, my friend of mine is maybe a bit more B2C than B2B, but. Um, oh yeah, I'm talking B2B here. I'm not talking B2C. Yeah. No, but I mean, the, the experiences I'm drawing off of are on B2C, from B2C uh, examples, but uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering if they apply to B2B. Uh, but to me, at the end of the day, it's about your, your customer experience, right? Like at the end of the day, like your, mm -hmm. your marketing is not going to have success, your sales is not going to have success, and your customer service and account managers are not going to have success if, if the customer experience is, is off. And to me, the question about commission versus no commission and if commission, how much commission is, is on how that impacts your customer experience, right? Because the danger that I could see with, with, with commission, no matter how big the commission is, is that, you know, is, is it, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, it's not a statement, it's a question. Is it um, encouraging your reps to engage in behavior that doesn't favor customer experience, right? So what I mean there is like, yeah. am I pushing a sale that shouldn't yeah. happen because I know that I'm getting a, ah, man, I just need that one more sale to make my commission this month. And, and I'm going to close it. going to be too involved after after sales because this commission is based in after sales. Like, are they, yeah. are they hindering the process of building a good customer experience? Totally agree with you. And, and you're right. And you do need to consider that. Yeah, I think I think to me that's that's definitely part of the equation. And again, that's the operational side, like having a clear understanding of of your customer journey and the experiences that they have, and and kind of the 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 if there are any like drops in conversion from one point of their journey to the next, um, because because yeah, it might make sense. Like, hey, we need commission because we need people to go out there and build pipeline. But then if you're looking at your numbers, is like yeah, but everybody who's building pipeline that are all churning and we're not making any money at the end of the day, you know, like salespeople are happy because they're getting their commission off of the first sale. But the reality is like, you know, like you just have to make sure that the way you're paying them is consistent with how you're making money as a business, exactly. but consistent exactly. with how your customers experience it. Exactly. Right? If you are giving them commission, it's to drive the proper behavior. So I don't disagree with you. If you haven't thought about it and you're giving commission or bonuses that's driving bad behavior, <laughs> You've got to restructure it. I guess my point is more if you want people to sell, there should be some kind of bonus on that 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 selling. But I agree with you that you don't want the bonus or the commission to hinder the types of sales you're going to get and also to hinder the ongoing relationship or the type of business that you're going to get. I I, I totally agree with you. So I And think I mean, because the experience I was... The, the where I was drawing on, and again, I mean, I'm not fam hyper familiar with the ins and outs of the business, but you know, like Best Buy obviously went through a, 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 is B2C. I mean, they have a B2B branch, but is B2C mainly. And their big challenge is that Amazon came in and now everybody buys all their electronics on Amazon, and Amazon is usually cheaper because they have less overhead. And what would what happened in in with Best Buy is that well, we'll become more consultative, right? Or, or not consultative, but advise people right and so now many of their sales people are on commission and so when you're getting in there you're not getting the impression that you're being sold a tv that you don't really need you're, they're just there to really answer your question and help you make the best choice and and so on and so forth and so you were talking before when you're talking about you know the market reality that's part of the market reality you have to understand if your markets change yeah. and if there are other options like right if i'm mm -hmm. selling piping for example and you know five years ago people had to go through me to buy their piping but now they can go on you know pipingwholesalers.com yeah. and call your rep and get the information that they need and then go on pipingwholesaling.com <laughs> and get it uh that means you need to change because then the commission because reps are going to feel that their commissions are going down because they're not selling as much so there's a chance that they might get more aggressive on the phone yeah. or in person or yeah, whatever. Absolutely. But, but you said it earlier, um, you know, you're giving a B2C example there, but you're right that you want the, you want to make sure you want to make sure that the behavior you're looking for is driven by a proper commission. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, if you do want, um, 
if you do want a certain amount of independence, um, you might up the commission a lot. So if you want it, because if you up the commission tremendously, then you might be dealing with agents. Some people prefer that. Say, hey, look, you sell what I give. It's going to be almost 100% commission. I'll pay you a little retainer but I want you to go out and sell it. Well, then then they work for themselves. Then your salespeople are agents. They're not working for you, they're working for themselves, which is fine. But is that a model you want to, is that a model that you want on your on your books? Um, yeah. So I don't think there's a wrong answer. The, the, so if we look at those three data points, we say, okay, what's the market? You know, in first data point is what's the market value of the person I need? Can I afford them? Does it make sense within my business model? And then number two is, am I going to uh, remunerate with commission to drive proper behavior or is it going to drive improper behavior? So that's important too. And what are you going to commission them on? Are you going to commission quant quantitatively or qualitatively? Because you can also give commission on qualitative. You can also say, hey, if you manage to retain 90% of your clients uh, because they're satisfied and it's good for the business, I will give you, uh, you know, a bonus. So, so there's a lot of options there, and that's where I think it's important. One one thing that one of my clients does, which I absolutely love, is right from the start, they have three bonus plans, and in their case, commission drives proper behavior. But sometimes they'll say to people, "We'll give you a three plan." So the plan A, you make less uh, base salary, but if you achieve your target you make the most mm -hmm. plan B is in between and plan C you make the most base salary, but if you achieve targets, you make the less amount of money. So, you know, if I say that concretely, you know, in, in plan A, they make 50 grand, but if they a uh, base, but if they achieve their target, they'll make 150 plan B, they'll make 75, but they, they achieve their bone, their uh, thing, they'll make 125 in plan B, they make uh, 85, but if they achieve everything, they'll make a hundred. So they sort of say it's it's more of a profit share thing, you, but we give you the option. I love that. So then the rep can sit down and say, okay, I'll, I'll take the more risky one because I can live with 50 base, but I like the idea of making 150. There's still, and for them, it drives the proper behavior. And, and yeah, so that, in that sense, right? because every rep is, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, you know, coaching and all that and everything always turns around like, what's your rep's motivation? And that's directly in line too, right? Like if I'm, uh, you know, a young parent and I have a newborn at home and, you know, there's like a new house to buy and all that, you might want the more secure uh, option for a few years because you can't tolerate the fluctuations as much. But if, you know, if you're single, you don't have anything, you have just like a rent to pay and your, you know, your cell phone's paid for from work and you don't have that many expenses, you know, you go, go for it go for it. Right. But then as your life expect change changes and you can change your plan, I think that's, that's a great option. Yeah, exactly. So look th that sales remuneration to me, in essence, is exactly that it's based on uh, thinking of those three factors, you know, and like you just said, now you, you need to look at the reality of the person. If it's a young person at home who, you know, can take a lot of risk, well then they can live on a lower base salary. So, so what they're doing in this case is they know they want to have commission, but they want to make sure that that commission reflects the reality of the person that they're dealing with. And, yeah. and so I, I like that. And I also, I think you need to look at your data points. So when you're looking at sales remuneration, you need to consider, I think these, you know, three overarching factors. Yeah. And I think like, you know, what I've seen some do, which I found really interesting is, and this was pretty, pretty basic stuff like it wasn't very complicated it's like every deal like obviously they were using upswat that's <laughs> working together and every deal that the rep had you had the potential commission on the deal right so the rep knew exactly what what that i mean obviously the commission structure was pretty straightforward what is based on the sale like there was there wasn't a lot of variables in there uh but i found that interesting because it helped the rep um, and actually they did two things. They had the commission, but they also had the impact that the deal was having on the client, right? So reps that were a bit more, uh, 
you know, value driven and they want to make sure they would have a change and impact on the world. They had like, this is the financial impact that this, this deal that you're having will have on your customer and others that were a bit more commission focused, had their potential commission set up in there. Right. And yeah. I mean, they knew it was only potential commission and there's always variables and churn and, and all that in there. But I thought that was interesting because it kind of puts them there and they understand that this is a, if it's a low commission deal, yeah, is, is this really a good fit client right at the end of the day? Um, because you can you can add in variables in your calculation that would in, indicate while well, they're a bad fit, clients of this, you know, maybe the dollar amount of the deal is high, but the the type of client this is already indicates that they're not a good fit. So your commission would actually be a lot less than you think it is. I think it would put it like it puts in people's faces. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a great idea. So, okay, what does it look like? What what does this do for for you as a commission salesperson, but what's the impact on the company? And what's the, the what's the impact long term on on what we're looking for? So I think that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found, that, I found that really interesting. And and yeah, you, I mean, obviously they knew that the cal- commission calculation wasn't wasn't like the end all be all, you know, at the end of the day, like all the other variables come into play, but it yeah. gave you an indication, right? That it's going to be between this and that. And, and this is actually a worse fit than, than I think it is. Yeah. And, and maybe I shouldn't be pursuing this as actively as, uh, you know, it's not because it's a big logo. Like their, their example was like, it's not because it's a big brand that everybody knows that a salesperson is like, ah, I sold, you know, Walmart as a customer. That's amazing. Yeah, but these are not good fit clients for us, right? And yeah. I, I, I always come back to an example I had, exactly that example, example I had when I was in the advertising agent, advertising world. And one of my clients had one of the one of the advertising media agencies had a, a huge automotive client. And they said, uh, I said, oh, that must be a great client. He says, no, we actually lose on that client. So what do you mean? He goes, yeah, we lose on that client. What that client does is it permits us to get other clients. Like, oh, uh, wow. So it, it was it was interesting to, to see that, that, you know, the actual efficiency rate, they were losing money because they were doing, you know, they would go and buy advertising and, and adver- whatnot. And, and the commissions they would make were very small. So it was very interesting. But you need to calculate that in your parameters like, oh, we want Walmart. It's great on our CV. But, you know, Walmart, you know, sucks 90 percent of our energy. OK, well, maybe is it really that worth it on your CV? You know, so, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. OK, that wraps it up. That's good. Short and sweet. Well, short ish and sweet. <laughs> that's short. Um, no, but, that's short. But we've had 40, 50 minute ones. <laughs> yeah. But I think in this one, I think there's, it's really those those three major parameters that you want to look at. You know, how yeah. does it affect my business? What do I want to drive? And 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 ultimately, um, you know, how does it fit in? Do I want an agent or do I want a salesperson? So, you know, it's all it's all within that line, you know. So yeah. Cool. Thanks, Fab. Thanks, Have a great see you next week. See you next week. Bye, Bye. everybody. <laughs>